Yeah, the Turkish military is on its third day of strikes against Kurdish targets in northern Syria. There is nobody in politics who can do what Donald Trump does. Let's be honest. They are going to have to beat Verlander or Cole or they're not going to the World Series. Harry learned that there were 700 ways of committing a Quidditch foul. Now, Milt, kill! But protect Binge Mode Harry Potter where we're exploring every facet of the Harry Potter universe. This is Planet Money from NPR. I'm Amber Hunt, and this is Accused, the unsolved murder of Elizabeth Andy. From the New York Times, I'm Michael Bavaro. This is Jenna this Fisher. Is... Hi, this is Angela Kinsey. And this Welcome is... to Pod Save America. I'm John Favreau. Don Levitar. I got somebody here making fun of me. How old do you have to be to be? Hello, thanks for joining us for the Spoken Word Audio Report. I'm Megan Lazovic, Vice President at Edison Research. And I'm Meg Goldthwait, Chief Marketing Officer at NPR. And I'm so pleased to represent NPR as we explore how our favorite medium is growing, how people are using it, and how it is affecting listeners. We first saw a trend on the growth of spoken word in Edison's share of ear data. And so that's why we commissioned this study to better understand that audience. And we have new data to explain the deep and broad impact that spoken word audio is in all forms. News, news discussion, podcasts, talk radio, comedy, audiobooks, sports talk, and play-by-play, and any other forms of speech-based audio has. But I'd like to point out one thing first. Edison Research has been measuring the audio listening behaviors of Americans for over 25 years. And within the past five years or so, we noticed that something special was happening. Americans are spending more time with spoken word audio. You might even say spoken word is having a moment. Would you agree, Meg? Oh, absolutely. We're in the midst of this cool new audio renaissance. As we all know, it's an era of multitasking. And now we are all trying to cram in as much content consumption as possible into our already jam-packed lives. So at the moment when there are so many demands on people's time, it's pretty cool to see that audio is fitting into their lives and helping them gain an understanding of their world. This report we'll share with you today draws from a number of research studies. First is a study conducted in partnership with NPR, which is an in-depth look at behaviors and motivations of those spoken word audio listeners. This is where we get to see how important audio is in their lives. We conducted an online survey of over 3,000 people representing the 73% of the U.S. population who listen to spoken word audio each month. Second, We'll cite data from Edison's Share of the Year study, where a nationally representative sample keeps a detailed one-day diary of their audio usage, including telling us whether what they were listening to is music or if it is spoken word. And because this has been an ongoing study since 2014, we are able to observe the growth of spoken word audio. We also performed in-depth interviews with spoken word audio listeners to talk about the impact it has in their lives. And we will be showing you clips from those interviews today. And our inquiries yield some of the main things we'd like you to take away from today. First, spoken word audio yields deep connections and involvement from its consumers. Second, people are spending more time listening to spoken word audio at the expense of music listening. And finally, growth in spoken word audio is fastest among young people and increasingly driven by mobile listening. While I'll focus mainly on the data, Meg will share her perspective as Chief Marketing Officer at NPR. And if you have questions throughout, you can enter them through the chat feature in this webinar. Or uh, we're also on Twitter, hashtag spoken word audio. Uh, Let's have a conversation that way. And we'll pick up your questions at the end of this webinar as well. Let's start with our first point. Spoken word yields deep connections from its consumers. We understood that immediately after sitting down with a number of listeners and simply asking why they listen. Depending on what type I listen to, it either helps me relax or it helps me um, to keep current with current events. So for me, that's special because, like I said, I don't have any magazines, newspapers any longer. So it keeps me abreast and it helps me relax. And those two things are very important in my busy life. 
I think I, wa I listen to podcasts more to learn, to stay informed. I love being educated, like, and any opportunity that I have to like do that, I'm gonna choose, you know? So it definitely like gives me the opportunity to feel like I'm doing something for myself and like learning something and doing something interesting, um, but I'm not consumed by it. It just gives you an opportunity to learn about anything you want on your time on demand. It's great. Um, it really helps you kind of broaden your horizons and, and it gives you the opportunity to do it uh, basically at any time you want. It used to be you had to be here for a certain show at a certain time and now it's here's my content. You're busy at five o'clock in the afternoon when like I'm putting my show on. Listen to it the next day or the, that night or whenever you can. I did everything I'm supposed to do. I went to work, I paid my bills, took care of my kids, fed them, put them to bed, read them the story, you know, all that stuff. So now it's like my time. Put my headphones on, go for a run and listening to the audiobook, listening to a podcast, whatever, that's just completely me, that's for me. Being at home for a while with children, it's quite removed from any former like, job or things like that I had, and sometimes you don't really talk to adults too much. Now I even further appreciate that. In college, it was one thing, because I, no one around me spoke like anybody speaks <laughs> on NPR or whatnot, but now in life, you're like, oh, I've been talking to, you know, nine-year-old or seven-year-old, or whatever, and so it's kind of nice to hear uh, you know, a witty adult conversation. Like sometimes you just need people, and I feel like that's one I would really need. Like want spoken word audio. You feel like on the same level as them. You don't feel like you're watching a TV or movie where there are all these big stars and they're just above you. You feel again like you're joining the conversation. Like you have a say. Like these are regular people having a regular conversation. And hey, for some reason I can relate to that. It feels like you're kind of like having a conversation with the person. It's a little bit. It feels more intimate. And it's new. It's, it's not, for me. It's, it's fairly new a new way of like um, getting information um, or learning. Well, I mean, it gives me perspectives on other people's thoughts and ideas and, and everything like that without actually speaking to a real person. <laughs> I don't know. To be informed, to feel connected, to relax, all of those things we heard in that last video were also reflected in the responses from our national online survey of monthly spoken word listeners. Now, they represent the 73% of the online U.S. population. So let's learn more about these listeners. Here's a list of reasons why people might listen to spoken word audio. Our respondents indicated which was a motivation for listening to each type of spoken word platform, either radio, podcasts, or audiobooks. And staying up to date with the latest topics was the number one reason to listen to spoken word radio, at 53% agreeing. You can see 47% of respondents said staying up to date was a reason to listen to podcasts, but few people, naturally, said it was a reason to listen to audiobooks. To be entertained was high across all platforms, and tied at 61% who said it was a reason to listen to both podcasts and audiobooks. Podcasts won the To Learn New Things category at 61%, followed by 48% saying it was a reason to listen to spoken word radio. And audiobooks win the category for relaxation at 51% saying it is a reason to listen. Podcasts win for inspiration at 38% saying it is a reason. 45% agreed that audiobooks are a good way to escape. 18% of respondents said companionship was a reason to listen to spoken word radio. 19% said it is a reason to listen to podcasts. And 22% said companionship was a reason to listen to audiobooks. That's a good callback to what we heard in that last video. Sometimes you just need people. Right. At NPR, we think of our journalism as solving problems in people's lives. One way to think about this is the different jobs we do for them. How Up First prepares them for their day with a download of the three biggest stories. The Indicator inspires them with a cool nugget from the business world. And our new podcast, Shortwave, gives them a welcome distraction with a fascinating discovery from the world around us. Understanding these jobs helps us make our programs and our podcasts a need rather than a want. This is important because we can't just expect audiences to passively consume our content anymore. In an on-demand world, we need people to demand NPR. Now, perhaps you've already noticed the push and pull between digital and analog listening. We know that on-demand options are changing listening behaviors. So we wanted to take a look at the listeners by those who are listening mostly through digital versus mostly analog. 
59% of the monthly spoken word listeners in our survey were digital first spoken word listeners, meaning they listen to spoken word audio mostly through computers, laptops, tablets, smartphones, or smart speakers. Digital first listeners are the largest share of spoken word audio users. And 41% are analog first, or they listen to spoken word audio mostly through AM FM radio. Now, let's see how these two groups are different. Digital first and analog first spoken word listeners are similar in sex composition. Both are slightly a bit more male. We see a big difference in age composition. Digital first listeners are heavy in the younger categories. 43% are age 18 to 34. Only 23% are age 55 or older. And analog first listeners are light on younger listeners. Only 17% of analog first listeners are age 18 to 34. And over half of them are age 55 and older. The digital first spoken word listeners are slightly more diverse as well, with 14% African American versus the 4% of African American analog first listeners. And 17% of digital first listeners are Hispanic versus only 10% of analog listeners. We asked, which of the following do you do most often? Listen to preset programming, pick specific segments you want to listen to, or listen to a personalized service based on your preferences. The majority, or 54% of digital first listeners, said they most often pick specific segments they want. Whereas, not too surprisingly, given the nature of AM-FM radio, 63% of analog first listeners said they most often listen to preset programming. But it's worth noting that about a third of digital first listeners are choosing preset programming most often as well. Here, we asked about all the ways they listen to audio, both music and spoken word audio. And you might think that digital first listeners are mostly listening to digital only content. But in fact, 44% of them say they listen to AM FM radio frequently. And that's higher than any of the other platforms listed. And conversely, analog first spoken word audio listeners, while 69% said they listen to AM FM radio frequently, many are spending time with digital platforms as well, such as the 23% who said they frequently listen to streaming internet only radio. Now, we asked a number of questions to help us understand why a person might choose digital or analog first. And here's one that sheds a little light. We asked our monthly spoken word listeners who are employed and work outside the home, how long is your typical commute? And digital first respondents commutes average 49 minutes, while analog first commutes average only 33 minutes. Could it be that people with longer commutes are more likely to adopt digital solutions? At the very least, we know that digital-first spoken word listeners are more likely to use the newer technologies available. We asked, do you currently ever use a voice-operated personal assistant, such as Amazon's Alexa, Google Assistant, or Apple Siri, on any of the following devices? And in every category, digital-first listeners were more likely to have used the technology. 75% had used voice-operated assistant on a phone, 43% on a computer, 41% on a tablet, and 32% on a speaker. This story seems a little obvious, but what is less obvious is the percent of analog first spoken word listeners using these technologies. We know from the Smart Audio Report from NPR and Edison Research that the world is being transformed by digital options. Meg, how is NPR addressing these changes? Well, we see these technologies as a way to more deeply integrate NPR into our audience's lives. So making NPR content available on these devices helps to reinforce our NPR brand by giving listeners access to NPR everywhere they go. We've made the NPR shows that people already love readily available on our smart speakers. Just this past August, we made Morning Edition available on demand on Alexa. We're thrilled about that. So instead of having to catch the show while it is live on the radio, listeners can now stream Morning Edition anytime between 7 a.m. and 3 p.m. simply by saying, Alexa, play Morning Edition. We've also used the power of the smart speaker medium to give audiences new ways to interact with our content. 
So for example, the program Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, incredibly popular. So for that, we've created an interactive skill that enables you to play the game on Alexa and Google-enabled devices. The quiz launched last January, and it has been growing in popularity ever since. It's really cool. I agree. Actually, Meg, I'm a longtime Wait, Wait listener, and I have played the game on my Alexa. I love it. But the point is, the audio space really has changed a lot in a short time. And it is especially interesting to hear it from the consumer's perspective in the next video where we asked our spoken word audio listeners how their listening has changed over the years. I'd have to say now I listen to more. Before it was like once in a while you'd hear of it. Now it's everywhere and everyone's listening. For me, there's a bigger range of spoken word. I, again, I was starting in like 2013-ish. At the time, there's definitely podcasts were a thing, but I don't think necessarily as much as they have grown to become. There was only, I felt like there was only like a very limited amount. NPR was like one of the big ones to now where I feel like there's a podcast a podcast on every topic imaginable. So I would say like I only probably listen to a handful of shows and that was not where the bulk of my time was spent. I feel like now like I definitely do more of that like intentional listening and also um, I've expanded by so much you know and I think part of that is um, I go through so much content. It's just more. It's become a bigger part of my life. You know my training runs we normally put together like a four hour block. So it was mostly all just music selection. Boom, 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 different, you know, low, fast, low, fast. Whereas now it's putting together like different sound bites of different speakers and uh, which I always had an interest in, but it's just become so much more, you know. There's more on demand certainly than ever before. Like I, before, if I, if I miss a show, Unless I sat there with a patched in a tape recorder to my radio, there was no way I was going to hear that show again back in the day. It was just one shot, and that's how it was. I'm like, not like War of the Worlds old, but like, <laughs> I still had to have like a tape recorder if I wanted to record something, and I would have done that when I was younger. I had this, this anyway. Um, I think now, I mean, there's more in terms of what to listen to if you just go into the search for like podcasts, or even on NPR, if you just go in the app, the NPR One, you know, there's. There's a lot of shows that are tailored to whatever you might want to listen to. And I find that it's just everybody has something they can listen to now. So after talking to these spoken word listeners and hearing how much more time they are spending with spoken word audio, we wondered if we would see a shift in overall Americans' listening behaviors. And luckily, we can do so with Edison's Share of Year study. Share of Year measures all audio listening. Our nationally representative sample of respondents records any and all listening to music, news, sports, or talk and personalities. And we'll spend a bit of time comparing the amount of time spent with music versus the amount of time with spoken word audio. When we're talking about all audio, music and spoken word, Share of Year tells us that on average, people listen to approximately four hours a day. Again, this is an average. So some people will listen to very, very little audio on their diary day, and some people listen to many, many hours of audio on their diary day. But on average, people listen to four hours of audio per day. And when you are looking at all of Americans' time listening, an average of one hour is time spent listening to spoken word audio. That's on average one hour of news, sports, or talk and personalities per day. Let's look at this finding another way. You see from this graph that over three quarters of the time people spent with audio is with music. 76% of time is spent with music. So basically, it is the case that no matter how you cut through the data, young people, old people, any way you look at it, when it comes to time spent listening to audio, music commands more of that time. In part, that's because music has a stretchy quality to it. People can turn it on, often putting it in the background, and leave it on for hours. Spoken word audio is different. Listening to spoken word is usually a vastly more intensive experience. People lean in. They truly listen. And 24% of all time spent listening to audio going to spoken word is significant. One quarter of all time is a lot of listening. 
and especially impressive considering where it was just five years ago. In 2014, music listening accounted for 80% of time with audio, and spoken word audio was 20% of listening. Our share of ear data shows us over the past five years, spoken word audio has been chipping away at music listening. The share of time spent listening to music has decreased by 5% over the last five years. And the share going to spoken word audio has increased by 20% over that time. So the share of your study clearly shows that something is shifting here. Meg, I wonder what types of changes you are noticing at NPR in terms of listenership. Well, I am definitely one of the reasons why music listening is going down and spoken word is going up, because I've noticed that same behavior in myself. It's important to note, though, that radio is still the number one way people access spoken word content. Broadcast radio is still NPR's largest share of audience, with 28.5 million weekly listeners. But at the same time, newer mediums are bringing new audiences to NPR. People who have never engaged with us on terrestrial radio, yet value our journalism in their lives all the same. Today, we reach 120 million people every month, a number that has grown significantly in the past five years. And spoken words share of year is growing across all age groups, but surprisingly, especially with those age 13 to 34. Again, we see 20% of listening time went to spoken word in 2014 and 24% in 2019. That's the growth of share for Americans 13 plus. To the right, we see the bars for the three age groups. And spoken word audio's share in 2014 is only 12% for those ages 13 to 34, which is the lowest share out of all three age groups. But that has grown to 19% of their time today. That's an astounding 58% growth for spoken word among young consumers. And where is that growth coming from? Well, some of it is from podcasts. According to the Infinite Dial from Edison Research and Triton Digital, podcast listening keeps growing, hitting an all-time high in 2019. 51% of Americans have listened to a podcast. And as content becomes more readily available in on-demand formats, we're seeing growth in other media as well. Audiobook listening hit an all-time high in 2019 as well. According to the Infinite Dial, half of all Americans have listened to an audiobook. So having on-demand content and so many types of programming to choose from means listeners are finding what they want, where they want. And here's that growth by the millions of people listening to spoken word audio. In 2014, 105 million Americans were daily spoken word audio listeners, and today there are 121 million daily spoken word audio listeners. That's 16 million more daily listeners to spoken word audio in just five years. So those 121 million daily spoken word audio listeners equal around 43% of the U.S. population. And here's another observation we can make from Cher Avir. When it comes to spoken word audio, the biggest single source is public media, such as NPR. In total, among the time spent with public radio on the radio, podcasts from public radio, and other forms of public media, no other company or entity provides more of Americans than public radio. Of course, that makes us very happy here. A lot of this comes down to how much people trust public media. Over 90% of our listeners agree that NPR makes a vital contribution to society, provides news and information I can trust, improves my quality of life, puts a personal human face on news events, and educates me about cultural perspectives different than my own. So that's not just me personally, but that's reflective of the 90% of our listeners. So let's go back to the listeners to spoken word audio from Cher Revere. We said that on average, among all Americans, listening to spoken word is one hour per day. But if we isolate those who do listen to spoken word for at least a little time, the average is two hours of spoken word consumption per day. The listening habits of daily spoken word audio listeners are much different than the habits of the total population. We'll demonstrate that in this next slide. I'm going to bring you back to that first data point where we look at time spent with each content. 
Again, that was 76% of time with music and 24% with spoken word when you look at all Americans age 13 and older. But what does it look like when you focus in on only the daily spoken word audio listeners? Here we see the contrast. Daily spoken word audio listeners are spending a lot more time with spoken word audio. 42% of their listening time goes to spoken word audio, and 58% of time goes to music. Their days are essentially split between the two formats. And where are they listening? Here's a look at the breakdown of all the time spent with spoken word audio in each location. In a normal day, most of Americans' time is spent with spoken word at home. 53% of time spent with spoken word audio is in the home. And that makes sense, given typically most of a person's day is spent in the home. Second to that, we see that 35% of time with spoken word audio is spent in the car, followed by 11% of time spent at work, and 1% with spoken word audio in other locations. Yeah, that drive time is a prime time for us at NPR. And we are finding new, cool, creative ways to serve listeners on the road. For example, we partnered with Spotify to include NPR News Now and their daily drive playlist, which is a curated list of news and podcasts to keep people entertained on their daily commute. And I can tell you that my 20-year-old son all of a sudden started talking about NPR once he heard it on Spotify, which is a win all around. That's also true for some of the 20-something people in our office as well. (laughs) So far, for most of this webinar, we've been grouping all of the spoken word audio together. But of course, there are many ways to listen to spoken word on different platforms and using different devices. So now we'll take a closer look at how people are listening to spoken word audio. And we can show you how that listening has changed over time. In 2014, 79% of time spent with listening to spoken word audio was from AM FM radio. And 8% of time was spent with podcasts. 13% of time was with other platforms such as streaming audio, Sirius XM radio, or audiobooks. Let's first focus on what has happened to the share of time spent with spoken word audio going to AM FM radio over the past six years. The portion of spoken word that comes from AM FM, which might include talk radio, news, sports talk and play-by-play, radio morning shows, and other forms, went from 79% of time in 2014 to 74% in 2015. It dropped to 66% in 2017, And as of 2019, now 61% of time spent with spoken word is from AM-FM radio. I should note that when I say AM-FM radio, this includes both over-the-air and streams of AM-FM stations. But even with those streams, which, by the way, is a very small portion of this AM-FM listening, we see terrestrial radio listening lost some time to its digital competitors. However, it is still by far the platform with the most time spent listening to spoken word audio. And that's just when we're talking about spoken word. Let's broaden our focus for just one second to see how time spent with AM FM radio is changing in the music space. When you compare the time spent listening to spoken word audio on AM FM radio to the time spent listening to music on AM FM radio, we see that the story is much better for spoken word audio than it is for music. The digital competitors such as Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Google Play, and the list goes on, those services are chipping away at music listening. Only 40% of time listening to music is on AM FM radio. Let's go back to the distribution by platform graph, and this time focus on podcasts. I'll point out again that in 2014, 8% of time spent with spoken word audio was from podcast listening. Meg, why don't you set the scene a bit and remind us what happened in the podcast world since 2014? So it's been about five years, and there are many factors contributing to this massive growth in podcast listening. Most importantly, podcasts fit naturally into the way people like to consume media today. They are on demand, available whenever and wherever people want them. They are also perfect for bringing a behavior that players like Netflix have entrenched in people. Podcasts are also ideal for personalized listening and curation. The audience can pick and choose from an enormous selection of topics and talent. And access to podcasts is easier than ever with new entry points and ubiquitous connectivity. Platforms are getting into the game. 
Google has started making podcasts a part of search results in a more meaningful way. And Spotify and Pandora, which were already daily habits for music fans, have made podcasts a core part of their strategy. So, for example, Spotify recently redesigned its app to put an enormous focus on podcast content. Right. And over time, we see the share of time spent with spoken word audio via podcasts has grown from 8% to 17% of listening. That's an incredible amount of growth in just five years. And not only has time with pod- the podcast medium increased, but the number of daily listeners has also increased. In fact, podcast daily listenership has more than doubled in the past five years. Meg, how do these data align with what you know from your listeners? Well, so we've seen this appetite for daily short-form podcasts in our listeners as well. More and more people are consuming content in the micro moments of their daily lives. That's why we've been rolling out a suite of daily podcasts that inform and inspire audiences in 10 minutes or less. This trend in daily listeners is terrific for our brand because it fosters consistent and dependable engagement with NPR, and it helps us build a daily habit with our journalism. One of the coolest things about the Share of Year study is that because it is a diary of 24 hours of listening, we can map out listening behaviors across an entire day. And here's the percentage of Americans age 13 and older listening to spoken word each hour. Here we see that spoken word audio peaks in the 7 to 8 a.m. hour. Of course, because that is when many radio stations have news. And stations that usually play music are often in a talk format or mixed music talk format. Again, this is a look at all Americans, not just spoken word listeners. The in-person interviews we conducted with spoken word listeners did help to frame this information a bit. But there was one particular participant who had so much to say about his spoken word listening that we just have to share it with you. Wake up in the morning, Alexa, play my morning briefing. So immediately upon waking up after my alarm, obviously, Alexa's going on during my normal like half hour morning routine. I have Fox News, I have NPR News, and I have MS- MSNBC that goes through, giving me my morning briefing, followed by weather. Usually after that, it's WFAN, the fan sports, playing on the radio inside the apartment until I leave, and continues usually into the car, depending on the day. If it's not that, it's either some kind of um, podcast or variety show. Um, I usually listen to NPR in the morning, uh, Freakonomics, and Adam Carolla show are my big three. Um, I'll mix certain things in either way, depending on what it came out during the week. When I get to work, I'm always gonna, I always always have an earbud in at some point in time. I sit in the loudest part of the office. It's very hard to concentrate. So I kind of use spoken word almost as a white noise. I'm like, I'm in and listening to it, but really I'm thinking about work. So sometimes I'll get something, I'll hear something while listening to like an audio book or a podcast um, that'll click and I'll stop working for a little bit. It's kind of like a mini break while at the desk. It's usually till about one o'clock. Uh, one to about five is usually a music switch because uh, I find just the afternoons I need a little pick me up and the word brings me down and after lunch, kind of get a little bit of that like tired food coma. On the way home, uh, radio's on, sport game, Mets, Rangers, Knicks, Giants if they're playing and I'm still in the car. And then when I get home after that, that's kind of usually when the spoken word ends unless I'm taking a walk um, and exercising. Not only did Joe mention multiple platforms, AM, FM, podcasts, streaming services, but he also mentioned multiple devices, AM, FM receivers, smartphone, smart speaker. And here's the distribution of spoken word audio listening by device in our share of your sample over time. Let's first look at the categories where we have not seen much change over these past few years. Computer listening has stayed virtually the same at 9% of spoken word listening in 2014 and 10% in 2019. And the other category, which includes Sirius XM receiver, CD players, and internet-connected TV, has stayed mostly the same at 9% in 2014 and 10% in 2019. But there is this new category of device that emerged in those in-between years. 
In 2017, we started measuring listening via the smart speaker device, such as an Amazon Alexa and Google Home. And as of 2019, 3% of time spent with spoken word audio is via such a device. Here's what else has changed. Back in 2014, 73% of time listening to spoken word was through an AM-FM receiver, compared to 55% of time in 2019. Now, let's look at the time listening to spoken word on mobile, going from 9% in 2014 to 22% in 2019. Now, mobile really is an interesting category to focus on because there is a lot of growth here across all ages. Again, in this graph, we see on the left, 9% of time spent with spoken word audio was through a mobile device back in 2014 for Americans age 13 and older, and it grew to 22% of time in 2019. Then to the right, we see it across all three age groups. Americans age 13 to 34 were already pretty mobile back in 2014. They listened to 19% of their spoken word audio through a mobile device. And then 32% of their spoken word listening is through mobile today. We see similar growth stories in the other age categories as well. 12% to 25% of time with spoken word audio through a mobile device for those age 35 to 54. And it grew from 2% to 12% for those age 55 and older. The point is, it isn't only one group of Americans driving the change. It is across all ages. Right. Mobile connectivity has allowed NPR to further deliver on its mission by meeting people where they are. 33% of all of our streaming hours are via mobile devices. So we've launched apps that make our content even easier to access on mobile devices. NPR One, for example, weaves member station broadcasts and podcasts together into a continuous learning experience. Now, when we consider listening via smartphone for all Americans, in 2014, 11% of that time was with spoken word. That means back in 2014, the mobile-friendly music services were contributing to the fact that most of the time spent listening to audio on a smartphone was with music. But in 2019, the time spent with spoken word audio on the smartphone has doubled. Today, 22% of all daily smartphone listening is spoken word audio. Surely, podcast apps and other great on-demand audio apps such as the NPR One app have contributed to this growth. Now, we just threw a ton of data at you, and all of this will be available on npr.org slash spoken word audio. But we'll reiterate some of the main things we'd like you to take away from today. Spoken word audio yields deep connections and involvement from its consumers. People are spending more time listening to spoken word audio at the expense of music listening. And growth in spoken word audio is fastest among young people and increasingly driven by mobile listening. Now, if you are an advertiser, those first two points combined, the level of connection and the amount of listening, should make you consider how much time you are spending in spoken word and if it is enough. And if you are creating this content, well, you have a very compelling story to tell, don't you? But if you are in the business of creating content, I do hope you are also thinking about our last point about growth in mobile listening. If you are building a spoken word strategy, consider your mobile strategy. Consider how technology is changing how people listen. I'd also encourage you to consider why the spoken word remains so powerful and pervasive and how your brand can tap into it. Audio, quite simply, is part of what makes us human. It grabs our attention, It triggers our memories. It stimulates our feelings. And as a brand, it helps us capture the hearts and minds and imaginations of our listeners. At NPR, we use audio to transport people to the countries and communities where stories are actually happening. When you listen to one of our programs or a podcast, you can hear and feel what the people of our stories are hearing and feeling. You are right there with them. This is how we make global stories deeply personal for our listeners. And thanks for being right here with us today. We'll open it up to questions now. We had that cute little music in that last video. I wish we could roll that music again while we're waiting for questions to roll in, but I'm just going to hear it in in my head now. Um, But uh, uh, Stephen says he's listening to jazz podcasts. Hey, Stephen, why don't you uh, message me those jazz podcasts? Because I'm a podcast fan 
and I'm a jazz fan, so send me a message there. Um, oh, okay, here's one. Uh, Chris writes, I'm confused by the change in mobile listening. In one slide, you said it was 9% in 2014, and in another, you said it was 11% in 2014. Well, uh, yes, I can explain that one. It is a little confusing because in both slides, the 2019 number was 22%. And that's actually purely a coincidence. In each slide, we were actually looking at two different cuts of the share of your data. Some people internally at Edison asked me that same question. So I do have something prepared to help explain. Laura, if you could find that, that slide that I added here. Here we go. Okay, so um, out of all daily spoken word audio listening, among all devices, radio, computers, mobile, smartphones, or smart speakers, et cetera, 22% of that time is on a mobile device. And then we also have, out of all daily listening on a smartphone, and that could be music or spoken word, 22% is to spoken word audio. So we can see the change here um, when we're talking about all spoken word audio listening, it went from 9% to 22% on a mobile device. And then when we're talking about just all audio on the smartphone, it went from 11% to 22% of sp spoken word audio on the smartphone. So um, yes, I, I can see why that was confusing. Uh, hopefully that clears that up for you. All right, um, another question comes in from Mary. She's asking what's next uh, for in the world of podcasting for NPR? What we are looking at is continuing to work on short form audios and audio podcasting and the way in which we can help create content that is useful for our listeners. So as we mentioned, we are focusing on daily habit and helping people understand that they can access quick content that can make them ready, help them prepare for their day. Monday through Saturday with Up First, which is a new offering for us, is offering Up First podcast on Saturdays. That's new. We also seek to help our listeners just live their life in a more productive way and, and help them sort of solve quandaries that have um, befuddled them. So we have an entire series of podcasts called Life Kit. And those kits are everything for, from how to manage the college process to how to talk to your children about climate change. And so, again, we here at NPR are looking to continue our desire to help people live more fulfilled lives, be more productive, and get sort of the jobs done that they need to get done every day. And typically for our listeners, the number one job that they want to get done vis-a-vis -vis spoken word is to become educated and to understand the context um, that their lives are taking place in. Awesome. I have another one from, oh, another Mary. Do you have any specific insights into the 3% smart speaker participation interactive being different than listening only. Uh, thanks for that question, Mary. Um, we actually have lots of insights in that category. Um, NPR and Edison Research have released the Smart Audio Report. If you are not already familiar with that, I highly suggest you look for that uh, on uh, NPR's website. And that's actually, we're, we're so sorry we had so much data to uh, put in today for you that we've run out of time. Um, but please keep sending your questions. Um, the few that have come in in the last few minutes, we'll finish answering um, over the GoToWebinar. You can also uh, send additional questions to us at info at edisonresearch.com or continue the conversation with us on Twitter. And thank you again for joining us for the first ever Spoken Word Audio Report webinar. This report will be available to download at www.npr.org slash spoken word audio. And a recording of this webinar will also be posted there to watch it again. Or if you'd like, hit play and just listen so you can enjoy the spoken word audio report as spoken word audio. Thanks again. Thank you, Meg. Thanks so much, Meg. And I appreciate it. And thanks everyone for tuning in.